Well, hello! I'd like to welcome you to another exciting episode of Pens in Use. This is the show where I talk about the fountain pens and inks I've been using throughout the week, and we'll address the live stream controversy. So let's dive into it. If videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens both new and old and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And you may have noticed I did a live stream this week instead of a review. Um, I think we all agree that that wasn't the best format for a review, but uh, I'd be curious your, th your feelings about the whole idea for first impressions, so let us know down in the comments, and I'll talk about it a little more later on if you're going, huh? So, <laughs> let's take a look at the pens. So the pens I've been using this week, uh, I had a whole bunch go empty, so I had to ink some new ones up. I have a Parker Dual Fold from the, probably the 1920s. A little discolored because of the latex sack that was in it. A Big Daddy. <laughs> no, not called a Big Daddy. But a, a modern Parker Dual Fold. A Parker Slim Fold, which is the UK version of the Parker Dual Fold. And a wonderful pen, by the way. A Parker Economy Dual Fold. I did a video on this one. Uh, I misidentified it and then had to go back and fix everything. A Platinum Procyon, which somebody actually recently in the comments asked, when are you going to review it? You know, I've done a first impression, but I haven't done a review yet. So maybe getting to that point. Uh, I have a Sailor, uh, Sailor Realo, that's the Piston Filler Sailor. I have my pretty amazing <laughs> Schaefer Legacy. A Caveco Dia, 803-07, 1930s pen. And because, for lack of a name, and it, it looks stone cold empty so i'm surprised it's still writing my rex pen green so those are the pens and inks that i'm or those are the pens that i'm using this week i'll be showing you writing samples as always in this bomo art journal all right so my first pen uh, by the way before i even announce my first pen september 20th payday got my first paycheck today since june so it's a happy day uh, Parker Dual Fold. This is a 1920s or 30s. It's called a Parker Dual Fold Streamline Junior. So it's a little bit smaller pen, as you saw. The finish on the barrel is discolored due to the latex sack degrading over the years and uh, staining the celluloid. This is more the original color of the celluloid because there's no sack in the cap. Uh, the ink I'm using in it is, uh, one of the pens last week must have bled through. Uh, the ink I'm using in it is Rohrer and Klingner. Alt Goldgrün. Maybe I haven't used it in the right pen. Uh, I am told that it has a gold sheen to it. I've never seen the gold sheen. I kind of like the odd sort of green color to it, which is why I have a bottle. But never, I've never seen the sheen. My next pen is a Parker Dual Fold, a much more modern pen. Uh, way back when I was about t 9 or 10 years old and first got interested in fountain pens, I remember looking through the pen catalog. I wanted a Parker Dual Fold. But what 9 or 10 year old can afford one? So 
eventually I ended up with a Parker Vector and my fountain pen journey began. Uh, this dual fold has a fine point nib on it. I am told that I can get several different size nibs and on the European markets I've seen uh, they have some interesting italic and oblique and so on so at some point I may do that. The ink in this one is a little bit different. Oops, I may have taken up part of my swatch space. Rohr and Klingner and it's called Clara. It's uh, one of their inks with the nanoparticles. Uh, an interesting line. I uh, decided I needed to try one. I uh, expected a more light green sort of a color than I got, but, you know, I like it. Then I get to my European, or I should say UK type dual fold, which is called the Slim Fold. That's a smaller pen, um, very nice nib on it. And these continued to be produced long after the regular dual fold stopped. So that's the Parker Slim Fold. Uh, the ink in it is Califolio Olanga. So how will we do with a French ink in a, well, I guess Brexit wouldn't have been an issue back when this pen was made. A uh, French ink in a pen from the UK. This is a pen probably from the 1950s. So, just to be clear, Brexit was not a thing then. Uh, this is my Parker Dual Fold. I purchased it from Pierre Gustafson of the world famous Pierre Gustafson Test. Uh, it's a Parker Economy Dual Fold. They weren't sold for very long. It has a almost unusable ink window here like I can't really make anything out and and it does have a tendency to dry up when I don't write with it for very long uh, but I didn't prep it at all but it started right up like a champ so pleased with that I, I thought I'd do a little scribbling before you got to see it right but it just fine This ink is also Califolio Noir. I like this pen. It's, it's, it's not one of those, oh, look at the amazing flex pens, or, oh, wow, this really shows off the shading in my inks types of pens. This is a let's get down to business and do some writing type of pen, at which I think this pen excels. And with this ink in it, it actually took the place of my beloved Lamy 2000 one day. Uh, I didn't like writing right side up in my shirt pocket though because that's where I was finding it was not writing and I'd have to write with it a bit to get ink to it. It seems to prefer writing more horizontally in my pen case. Uh, my next pen is a Platinum Procyon, which I really like. You know, I, I looked at the Lamy Ion and... Uh, the Caveco Perkeo, which are kind of in this ballpark. This is the only one I really liked, and I really liked it. Fairly plain design. Yet that, and it's metal, which I don't usually like, but that something about that color and the finish on it, just, yeah, I like. Uh, the ink, uh, another black ink. Or in Klingner. I've wanted to try this one, so I finally have. Uh, lost my line here. Leipziger Schwarz. Black. 
black. I'm pretty sure that has to do with Leipzig. Sort of a bluish colored black. Uh, I remember reading somewhere about the sheen on it, so you know, I, I uh, need to do some writing on nicer paper and find out what's the deal with that sheen. Because you can't really see it on this paper. This one is a Sailor Realo. There are some in the reviewing world who've complained about the, the Sailor converters. I've honestly never had trouble with their converters, so I don't know what they're talking about. But the Realo is a piston filler, so it uh, saves you from those issues, I guess. Uh, this has a broad nib on it. And the ink in it is a uh, Robert Austin. Robert Oster, Yellow Sunset. This pen, uh, I don't know, sa sailor pens are nice, they're well made, they have good nibs and all that, but... Uh, well, let's just say there's a reason I don't have a lot of sailors. They just, I think I'm up to three, maybe four, but the one's real cheap. Uh, they, they just, they're not exciting pens to me. Don't know why. They're good pens. But I suppose that partly emotional. It comes down to like that Ford Chevy thing. You know, is Ford better than Chevy? Is Chevy better than Ford? I don't know. Uh, it's usually a more uh, emotional attachment rather than a factual one. You know, my great-grandfather sold Model Ts. Uh, and his son, my grandfather, didn't go into that business. He decided to be a farmer and work for Corning Glass instead. But uh, he was always a Ford man his whole life. Ford was better. Why? Because family history. And I drive a Toyota. This is a Schaefer Legacy. I purchased from Van S. Pens. And it turns out I got quite the bargain. I didn't realize that. But uh, I guess when the company went out of business, somebody had purchased a whole bunch of these. And then they sold them to Van S. Pens. But uh, if you look on the internet for even just the pen, but the pen, the, the full set like I got, the full set like I got will cost you 600 and some dollars. Did not pay anywhere close to that at Van S. Pens. So good for them for not trying to gouge their customers. I know they made money, which, you know, if you're a business, you kind of have to make money. But I think they did so in a reasonable way. Some of the prices you see on eBay, uh, yipe. So, if I don't get paid for a month, I suppose I sell this off and I'll be okay for another month. But, it'd be hard to convince me to sell it off. I think I'd have to be pretty desperate because I do like the pen a lot. Don't, I mean, that's a good vibrant red. I just, it's just not a color I use. Uh, this is my Caveco Dia 803-07. It's a 1930s model. Almost uh, the size of their pocket pens that they have now. Uh, the ink in, or sorry, the nib in it is an oblique medium, and the I think it's the first, I think that's the first oblique nib I owned, and the ink in it is Califolio. Oh, 
Burgoyne. Uh, it's kind of a nice understated sort of a wine type of red. So when I talk about reds I like, here we go. A little more understated. And I don't know, there's just something about Califolio inks that, that's pleased me. And they're supposed to be safe in vintage pens, so, you know, that may be a piece of it. This is my Rex Pen Green, for lack of a name, because it's, you know, green. This has one of the, and uh, yeah, empty, but still writing, so I thought, well, let's give it another week. Well, another episode. And it has that amazing Bach nib. So we'll just call it a Rex Pen Green. One thing I've not been noticing with this lens on this uh, this camcorder is things it, it does weird things with perspectives. Perspective, like when I lay the pens out, I actually have to tilt the clips toward the middle just so they look like they're straight up and down. And this is Noodler's Green Cactus Eel. Or cactus green, I can't remember. Oh, green cactus. Very wet nib. And uh, it's lubricated ink, which I know has to do with the fountain pen parts, but I am told that it also affects how it flows out of the pen. This is a very nice green color. So those are the pens and inks that I've been using this week. Uh, it's been a nice batch to carry around with me. A nice variety of colors this time. And uh, yeah, I corrected some tests with these colors. I, uh, I just like having a variety with me. We had uh, some meetings today. I, I like to be able to use some different colors and some different nibs to take my notes at meetings. Just all around good. I... Uh, have a bunch of letters to catch up on, some letters that are caught up and just need to get in the mail. Um, so I'll be working on that tonight. And yeah, we'll put these pens through their paces. I'm sure that Rex pen will not last another page because it is stone cold empty. Uh, this week, I'm just looking at my notes, make sure I remember what I wanted to talk about. This week, I uh, experimented on Wednesday. I, I planned to film the review ahead of time, but I just didn't get to it. So I was home, I got home as early as I reasonably could, and I thought, well, I'll just film when I get home. But the city is doing some work on the streets, and there was too much noise, and I just felt, oh, I don't know. So I uh, waited, and by then it was later, and I thought, okay, first you're going to film, then you're going to have to edit, then you're going to have to upload, and it's going to be till forever when you finally get this thing published. And I'd already been late one day with a video that week. So, I, uh, making sure I have enough time, I live-streamed my review of the Majestic Pen. I, it was okay, you know, as, as an unannounced live-stream. People don't know, so they don't know to watch it. So I, I probably had about the, the traffic I could bear at, at, at the time. I, I don't think live-streaming is conducive to pen reviewing, as far as the way I do them, where I like to know the company, I want to know a little story about the pen, I want to, I want some history. But afterwards, and, and several of the comments mention this, it might be an interesting way to do first impressions. Now, not every first impression, but be an interesting way. Now, I would have to change the time and possibly the day that I do live, uh, my first impressions, which... You know, people kind of depend on Monday, but it's not like there's a posted schedule anywhere. Uh, it would probably end up being Sunday evening. And uh, now I thought that might be kind of interesting to try. So don't expect it this weekend or the next weekend. I want to write down some more notes and get my thoughts in order. Um, but I'll announce it here on Pens and Use and probably in the Community tab.
Now, I will say there were some other comments. Um, one person deleted theirs, which was a shame because I thought they made some good points. Uh, they basically said that they preferred the regular reviews. Uh, and they pointed out that, yes, you get a lower resolution because I'm using a webcam. And uh, what else did they say? I don't remember. Just a second. We'll bring it up here because, yeah, the computer's sitting right in front of me. I want to make sure I address it even though they deleted their comment because it still shows up in my stream. Okay, yeah, and uh, I don't think I can click on it. Yeah, when I click on it, it disappears. So, uh, yeah, it's not there. So if I click on it, it disappears, that's why I'm pretty sure they deleted it. So he, they just said that I have to say that your usual recorded videos are of a much better so I, I'm, I'm going to assume that they go on to say quality. Because I'll edit out things like... That's me rolling on the floor with my chair. Or, or the weird clunks that the, or squeaks that this chair makes. Or my... Those moments. I edit those all out when I, when I record these videos. And uh, that didn't happen. I did use my regular high quality microphone. But I just regular cheap webcam to record the video. And when I transition here, the transition is I crop out the part of the footage where I switch from this camera, the A roll, to this camera that's off screen here, the B roll. Well, I had just one camera, so you had to watch live while I flipped it upside down and messed everything up. In fact, I had a deep concern about my ceiling. She said, there are no cobwebs. Um... <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for noticing. There's a little story behind that. I was sitting over there at the couch uh, about uh, six months after I'd bought the house. It was just a time of the day. I'm never home, or if I am, I'm doing something. So just rare that I sit at the couch then. Looked up at that wall over there, which is the north side of the house. And I have light coming in here and to the south. And I thought, oh my God, what's happened to the house? Because there were cracks all along that wall. Got up to go inspect them. There were cobwebs full of dust that I just hadn't noticed because I was never around in that kind of light. So since then, I've kind of had a little phobia about that, so I keep the cobwebs down. But anyway, let me know what you thought of that, what you think of live streaming. If I do live stream the, uh, let's say, every other or the occasional pen, uh, would Sunday night be appropriate or Sunday afternoon? You know, I, I had some other comments. Well, I'd be nice to watch your live stream, except I live in X country, so I'm asleep. Uh, so let me know down in the comments. I, I'd like, you know, I'm uh, UTC minus six right now. U I will be UTC minus seven over the winter. Uh, mountain time for those of you in the United States. And it just... Uh, I, I want to do something, I want to add value by doing this and uh, not take away value. And I think the more interesting pens or the more detail-oriented first impressions, maybe I will continue to do pre-recorded like this. Because uh, for certain reasons I don't want to get into, the some Sundays I can't. I just have other commitments, um, family-related mostly occasionally work related but mostly family related so uh i can't every sunday but anyway let me know down in the comments what you thought of the live streaming <laughs> today after school on another note I, I was walking home ran into our preschool teacher we haven't had a preschool before it's something we added this year i know it's north dakota where that's how it is here but we finally have a preschool and she was excited one show me her classroom i mean she lives right over there um like right across the street so you know we're neighbors so i went up saw our classroom and yeah it's pretty cool found a found one piece of art on her wall which kind of sad but it was a student who i don't know if i mentioned this summer that i had a i was at a funeral and uh for a student who'd take former student who'd taken his own life but anyway we found uh, on the wall a mural that he had painted back when he was in high school and you know she'd been teaching in this classroom for over a month now and hadn't noticed it so that was kind of cool um, sorry, that totally took me off my topic. Um, anyway, so, uh, but she was talking about the difficulties of preschool and everything. And one of the things she mentioned is part of their job is disinfecting all the toys and tables and everything that the little kids touch. And I just, and then she's talking about 
the hygiene issues of that age group, and I thought to myself, yes, thank you for one more reminder why I teach high school. <laughs> um, I couldn't do what she does. I need to be in high school. I could not deal with a classroom full of preschoolers. I honestly could not. <laughs> so, uh... Anyway, if videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens both new and old and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And let me know what you think of the live streaming videos, uh, the live streaming first impressions uh, down in the comments. You know, do, if I do it, is Sunday night good? Or maybe sometime Sunday afternoon what might be a good time. Keep it in mind where I'm at. Uh, any thoughts on the live streaming, how to make it better? So let me know down in the comments. So I want to thank you for watching. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.